Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I am going to talk about a few new tools that I got or have on the way. Uh, and I'm also going to try to pull off the wheels and get them painted on the CB. So let's do it. Guys, here's the uh, first tool I picked up. I guess it's actually a multitude of tools. It's one of those Home Depot Black Friday deals. It's just like Ryobi, whatever, six set power tool thing. Uh, the reason I picked it up is either my batteries are bad or the impact itself is bad on my quarter inch Craftsman. Had the thing for almost 10 years. Um, so I was looking for a replacement and then this whole thing was like 200 bucks and I also really wanted a, uh, a Sawzall, you know, reciprocating saw. Um, I think that will make it a lot easier to get nice clean cuts when I chop the frame off of this, when I chop the frame off of that. Um, you know, just a lot of projects like that, it'll be a, a little bit easier to get nice clean cuts on stuff as opposed to using a cutoff wheel on a grinder. Um, and then it just came with the rest of this stuff. So I went ahead and got, uh, got this. So this is the first new uh, set of tools um, I'm going to show you guys this week. This is the next tool that I got. So this is a... Uh, Porta band, a portable metal cutting band saw I picked up on sale from uh, Harbor Freight. And it had pretty decent reviews, so I figured why the hell not try it. And then I actually built this little uh, stand for it. It's just a simple box frame with these legs, a support bar across the back that does bolt on uh, so that I can pull the um, you know saw off of the stand and then just cut out a quick little table. I probably am gonna get some like quarter inch square stock and kind of make this a little bit more stable. Um, you know, it's usable the way it is now, but I do want to uh, to have it a little bit more stable than that. But yeah, so now this is basically just a little bench top metal cutting bandsaw, which I never had before, and I'm uh, I'm super stoked about it. So a little uh, little stand worked out really well, and you can see I have the trigger zip tied because uh, that's the only way to get the saw to stay running. Uh, then I just use a little, you know, switch on the little power strip to turn it on and off. A little bit ghetto. I may do a more, you know, permanent solution, but it works just fine for now. And, you know, as long as you're careful with it, then uh, it'll be just fine. I'm not going to plug anything else into that power strip. I'm going to use it just solely for that purpose. But down the road, we may, you know, if I end up using this tool a lot, hardwire in a, uh, a little bit more permanent uh, switch for it. But... Yep, so we got a nice uh, metal cutting bench top bandsaw as well. So that should uh, help up my cutting game a little bit. And speaking of cutting game, I actually got one of these as well. So this is an Evolution uh, chop saw. So I really hate those super loud abrasive disc chop saws for metal. Uh, so this actually uses a, uh, a multi-purpose metal blade. Um, to cut and it'll cut wood it'll cut aluminum it'll cut steel it'll you know they call it multi-purpose because it will cut multiple different types of material and i've used this thing already on making that little stand for uh the bandsaw and it is amazing i don't know how i lived without this thing i can't recommend it enough it was under 200 dollars, and it's you know doesn't make the metal hot it cuts right through i've cut through angle iron i cut through box tubing i cut through quite a few things already I cut through a quarter inch bar stock and it, I mean, literally cut it like it was wood. It was, is awesome. So very, very happy with that purchase. Um, it's, you know, all of these tools are kind of with the intent on upping my, uh, accuracy and all that kind of stuff of cuts. Cause before I was just strictly using a uh, angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and it's really hard to get nice straight cuts and, you know, it takes a long time to cut through thick material and stuff with that. Uh, plus you burn through a lot of those discs. So this is uh, going to be a huge addition and, uh, you know, give me the ability to cut nice 45 degree angles on things. And, you know, that saw is going to get a whole lot of use uh, as well. Next tool I want to show you guys is this uh, motorcycle hitch carrier that I got from my truck. Uh, the reason I got this, you know, should be pretty obvious, but, um, you know, that truck being so tall, it's really really sketchy to try to put a motorcycle into the bed of the truck uh, just because i mean you're trying to wheel a you know 400 pound motorcycle up above waist level uh, definitely not a one-person job probably not even a two-person job 
So it was just a, a big pain. So all the bikes I've been moving, I have to go to U-Haul and buy, or not buy, but rent a trailer. And then, you know, I use the trailer for it. Then I got to bring the trailer back. And it's like 30 bucks every time. This popped up on sale from Northern Tools. Uh, it was uh, right at $120, I believe, $130 maybe. Um, it has a 500 pound capacity, which for the bikes that I typically own and build, that's going to be just fine. I'm not, you know, carrying any big Harleys or anything like that. Most of the bikes I have are, are sub 450 pounds. Um, I did make some modifications to it because when I first got it, this is the ramp that you load things on. Uh, or you load the motorcycle on with and i apologize for all the background noise as always um but yeah this is the ramp that you use to you know load the bike on it climps it goes right onto the end of here and as you can imagine or visualize when you put that ramp on there i mean we were at like i don't even know what kind of angle but it was basically like you're trying to push a bike up a, a flat wall it was it was basically useless so um that was kind of a bad design flaw in this. So what I did is just took some angle iron and extended it two feet. So now it has a nice angle on it and it can definitely be, uh, you know, pushed up on their uh, one person operation. Um, I've already done it. So I did the uh, extension, two feet extension on the ramp and then also added this bar up here. Uh, stock, it wanted you to use these tie down mounts so it was going from like the handlebars up here down to there and the angle that the straps were at i did not feel confident that it was very secure i kind of wanted the straps to be you know in front of the front wheels um, so again just another piece of angle iron across there bolted to the front so i can take it off if i want and that's going to be a, a good tie down spot for the front of the bike so yeah those are the modifications i made to this otherwise i'm happy with it i actually haven't taken a bike anywhere on it yet but it seems like it's going to be uh be pretty awesome for transporting bikes uh without having to uh, rent a trailer anymore so the last tool i'm going to talk about actually isn't here yet um actually i guess there's two tools on the way i went uh, a little bit crazy with ordering tools uh this week but this is a 100 percent argon tank and if you don't know what that is for that is for a tig welder and i do have a tig welder on the way Today is Wednesday. It should be here on Friday. So I'm very excited about that. I'm, I've always wanted a TIG welder um, so I can get a lot more accurate welds, control the heat better. You know, I can start modifying gas tanks and, you know, smaller brackets and just kind of up my welding game a little bit. I do love my little Eastwood uh, MIG. Uh, and it's still going to stay in the garage and be used for a lot of things as well. That's why I actually went with Eastwood for the TIG as well. I got their TIG 200. It is an AC-DC, so I can do uh, steel and aluminum welding. So, yeah, I just picked up this 100% argon tank this morning, and the TIG welder will be on the way. So I've never actually even held a TIG torch in my hand, so it's definitely going to be an interesting process to uh, try to learn. But uh, I'm really excited about it, and I, you know, my ideal... Uh, thing would be to get competent enough TIG welding to where I actually TIG weld on the hardtail for that um, Which you know, it may take me a good while to get the skills down But I'd really love the welds to be nice and clean and stuff on that on the triumph hardtail So we'll see we'll see how difficult it, it really is and we'll see how confident I am once I get it If I'm way off and you know, the welds are terrible then you know I may just end up using the MIG and cleaning up the welds uh, but we'll see. So TIG welder on the way. And then another thing from Eastwood, I got that uh, new SCT contour surfacing tool. Um, basically, if you don't know what that is, it's a tool they came out with recently that uh, has a little disc on the front or kind of a more of a drum or a cylinder shape. And it's for um, stripping paint and body filler and rust off of things and putting a brushed finish and uh, basically, I'm going to be using it for the gas tanks to strip all the stuff off of. And then, um, you know, a big project we have coming in the channel um, that will actually be here in about a month uh, that I'll do a whole reveal video. And so if I've hinted at it before in the past, but, you know, we'll do a reveal video once it's actually here in the garage. Uh, but that big, big project, uh, it's going to be the biggest project by far I've ever done um, just to add more suspense to it. 
uh, will be here and uh, and I'll be using it a lot on that. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the tools so far uh, on the way. So I'm going to uh, start to work on the CB550 now. I wanna pull the wheels off and paint them. Uh, what I am gonna need to do is modify this jack that I got. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. So basically what I want to do is I picked up this little car, you know, screw jack from the flea market for like $4. Um, and I want to make that into a motorcycle lift. So I can use it on the table over here to lift up, you know, the back of the bikes when I'm, you know, working on them up there and also to use on the ground as well. Because if you look at this bike and most CBs, the exhaust goes directly under the bike. So I can't use my normal motorcycle lift that I have because all it is is basically two pads that go directly under it and it can't get on the frame to lift it up. So, you know, I could use individual blocks and I've tried to do it with wood and it's like not very good. So what I'm gonna do is basically just make a flat bar across the top of this with some extensions that go up and then a little V shape that'll go right onto the bars of the frame. That way I can just throw this under it um, and lift up, you know, the front of the bike or back of a bike or whatever. Uh, basically just make a little motorcycle lift because um, the ones on, on Amazon and stuff are like $80 for some unknown reason. So if I can make one for $4 plus some scrap metal, uh, I'm going to try to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put all these new tools to use and uh, knock that out real quick and I will uh, show you what it looks like. Right, guys well here's what I whipped up it took uh, I don't know probably 25 30 minutes maybe 
Um, it's still ugly. Obviously, I can sand down the welds and paint it and that kind of stuff, but I'm not really worried about that right now. So basically what I got is these two uprights with V shapes in them to go on the bottom of the frame. They bolt on uh, so that I can make them adjustable. So if I have a bike with a you know thinner frame or whatever, I can do that. I just tack welded it onto the top of the jack right now because I'm eventually going to want to design some way for that to be adjustable as well. Um, yeah, just so I can kind of basically have full adjustability in the whole thing. Um, I may end up finish just totally welding that and have these just be more adjustable. I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. Right now it's just tack welded, but it's plenty strong because all the force, of course, is going to be going down on it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put it under the bike and see how it works. I don't have a handle for it, so I'm either going to have to make something or keep an eye out for one or whatever, but um, I'll just, you know, makeshift something for now, but uh, let's see how it works. All right, so the uh, consensus is it does work. Um, it's a little bit less stable than I would like. Um, if you have the back wheel off the ground as well, it can it can really teeter kind of side to side. So you definitely either want some additional side to side support. Hmm, I may have to kind of rethink the design since it does have that pivot point in the middle. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. So as of right now, I want to get started on the wheels. Um, so I'll kind of keep working on that design. I'll just do the back wheel, um, you know, and then I'll figure out a way to uh, to lift the front up here just enough to get it onto uh, maybe some jack stands or something to where it's uh, nice and stable. Uh, then we can pull the wheels off. Okay, simple solution. I just put a jack stand underneath each uh, foot peg just to limit the side-to-side -side motion now front tires off the ground and rear tires off the ground so the bike's uh, a lot more stable now it's not going to go anywhere with the two points in the back two points in the front it sure would be a whole lot easier if uh, the exhaust didn't go underneath these bikes and i could just use my normal you know bike lift but it is what it is so i'm going to go ahead and pull the wheels off Uh, pretty much totally cleaned up. I used some wax and grease remover and I actually used some uh, 
brake cleaner too to get the really stuck on uh, grease and stuff so they are about as clean as they are gonna get uh, now I'm gonna use this little uh, fluffy it's like I don't know, an abrasive little ball. It's not super coarse or anything. Just to kind of give them a once over, knock off anything loose, any kind of loose uh, oxidation or anything like that. So I'm just going to give each wheel a little once over. It'll also, you know, scuff it a little bit too um, so that the primer sticks nicely to it. I wanted to show you guys, this is how I'm going to mask it. It's by far the easiest method. So all of these out here are actually just 3x5 index cards. So if you let all the air out of the tire, you can push the tire in just enough to tuck these in around. You know, you overlap maybe a, a third or a quarter of the card as you go. And that gives you a real nice edge right around the rim that's masked off. So obviously you don't paint the tire. Then I just tape off the valve stem, the actual, you know, studs themselves, and then where the bearing is. Um, and then I like to put it on top of a like a normal house paint can uh, The reason for that is I want to paint both sides at the same time so that they're nice and uniform So right now it's sitting on a non painted surface on the back side and then this side these four studs go right on that can so it keeps the uh, you know painted surfaces off uh, when it's flipped over as well, so right now I'm going to flip it over put the index cards in on the other side um, and then this wheel is actually going to be ready to uh, spray with primer and then I'll do uh, a very similar thing on the uh, front wheel. These are the uh, paints I'm going to try this time. I've seen a couple of videos and reviews that actually say that this is better than the wheel paint. Uh, so what it is is Rust-Oleum Appliance Epoxy. So it's supposed to be washable, moisture resistant it says. Um, so it's supposed to be really smooth nice uh, finish on it um, so we're gonna try it out I'm gonna hit it with some uh, primer first and um, you know make sure it has a nice coat of primer and everything so we have a uh, good adhesion um, if you are just to spray this right on you know the stock wheels it would eventually chip off just because they're nice smooth chrome so that's why we scuffed them up a little bit and then gonna hit them with some primer too so um, this wheels ready to go this is how I mask the side that where the brake goes run a bunch of lines on there then run a razor blade around it so you get a nice clean edge so i'm going to go ahead and uh, primer this one um, and then we will uh, move it to the side and get to work on the front wheel i let the uh, primer on both wheels uh, dry overnight it looks like i got really good even coverage on them So I'm going to go ahead and hit them uh, with their first coat of color and we'll uh, see how that turns out. I just finished up the uh, first coat of the black and turned out really, really well so far. So it looks like this combo is... Uh, Gonna be a winner. Again, this is the uh, Dupacolor Automotive Primer, and then the uh, I'm sorry, Rust-Oleum and the Rust-Oleum Appliance Epoxy. Um, so yeah, so far it looks really good. I'll probably wait, uh, probably wait a few hours. It's a little bit chilly today, um, and then hit it with a second coat. And then honestly, I think that's all it's gonna need. This stuff seems to be uh, covering really, really well. So we'll come back in a few hours and check on them and uh, hit them with a the second coat. That's uh, pretty much going to do it for the paint on this. Um, I ended up doing a kind of a light third coat uh, just because there was some you know, little areas inside the hub here that didn't get great coverage. Um, but everything else, I mean, it looks like it turned out really, really nice. So I'm really happy to see what it's going to look like when it's all uh, unmasked, which I'm going to wait until it dries, you know, that last coat dries a little bit more before I pull that off. I'm also putting a coat of paint on the inside of the rotor um, just to make that look a little bit nicer. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for this video on painting the wheels. Uh, one exciting thing that just finally came in, 
my hardtail for the Triumph. It said 8 to 12 weeks, and I literally think yesterday was 12 weeks. So <laughs> they weren't kidding with that estimation. So, yep. This is the uh, hardtail with the tri for the Triumph. It looks really, really nice. All the welds, all the TIG welds and everything look really good. So it's pretty awesome that this finally came in. Again, I went with a four inch stretch and a two and a half inch drop. Um, that may be backwards. It may be a two and a half inch stretch and a four inch drop. No, I'm pretty sure it's, I don't know. I could put it in the video, but um, so yeah, that's finally in. Um, I kind of put it up against the frame uh, on the bike itself. I'm definitely going to have to pull the motor, um, which is fine because I wouldn't mind kind of putting a whole new coat of paint on the whole frame when it's done just so it's nice and uniform. And um, So I'm going to totally finish this bike first um, just because I don't you know, intend on really keeping this bike for very long. I am building it to sell. So... I'm waiting for a few parts to come in that should be here. Uh, today is Thursday. It should be here by, I would say, Monday or Tuesday of next week. I should have everything. Uh, the seat uh, is going to be here on Monday, I believe. The frame hoop is going to be here on Saturday. Um, and then I think that's the battery is going to be here either today or tomorrow. So, yeah, I mean, that's literally all I'm waiting on. Um, I am going to have to do something custom with this exhaust because it does contact the frame a little bit and also contacts the bottom of uh, like the oil pan, I guess. Uh, so I'm gonna have to figure out if I wanna lengthen each tube by like half an inch or if I just wanna maybe heat it up and bend it or you know, what I'm gonna do to, uh, to get some more clearance on that. Um, so here in a little bit, I'm gonna start tearing down the front end, but uh, that'll be in the next video. I think this one's going to be long enough with the amount of rambling I tend to do. So, yep, that's going to be it for this one, guys. I appreciate you guys watching, sticking around for the project. Uh, thanks for all the feedback everyone's given me on uh, on ideas of what to do to the bike. Oh, see, here I go. One last thing I got in. I ordered this whole pack of LEDs off Amazon. They're 12-volt LEDs in a bunch of different colors. I think five different colors. Um, and my goal here is to... I got a color for each of the corresponding ones here. Um, so I'm going to make this little indicator panel uh, with LEDs instead of the uh, the factory, you know, fluorescent or incandescent or whatever they're called, bulbs that tend to burn out. So, yeah, that'll be another project I may throw in um, when I start to tear apart the front end as well. So, yeah, like and subscribe if you guys want to continue to follow along. This is happening. Triumph's happening. And then, of course, a big project. Uh, that'll be here in a couple of weeks that I'm going to need to clear out a whole heck of a lot of room for. Um, so yeah, very cool. We'll uh, catch you guys in the next one.